Obi-Wan Kenobi is on a mission. Along with the former Jedi apprentice Ferris Olin and a headstrong kid named Trevor, he is trying to keep the Jedi's most important secret safe from the Inquisitive Empire. With Boba Fett on their trail and time running out, Obi-Wan, Ferris, and Trevor must make some daring and desperate escapes into even more danger. Along the way, they discover some incredible news. Obi-Wan and Yoda are not the only Jedi to have survived the Emperor's annihilation of the Order. There is at least one other, and he is hiding in the Caves of Elam, a place where nightmares become reality and dark warnings tell of conflicts yet to come. Welcome back to the Padawan Library. I'm Levi Paratic. With me, as always, Tim May. Hey! And we are the Star Wars Junior Novel Podcast, and this week we are reading Book 2 of Jude Watson's Last of the Jedi, Dark Warning. Not Dark Greetings, Dark Warning. Dark Warning to all of our listeners. (laughs) So, this week, before we get to the book, a couple of things. One, I did a little bit of catch-up on my Star Wars media homework. I watched the last episode of Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian, uh, which was a delight. Just basically, a- like, Favreau and Filoni talking shit on each other the whole time. That's basically all it was. Joking around. Um, I enjoyed the <laughs> bit where Favreau's trying to impress George because he, like... Uh, he's, he's got the, the gun from the holiday the special. The gun from the holiday special. And, this is like, and he says, like, that's canon, right? Which I thought was very funny. Good <laughs> good job, Favreau, on that one. Yeah, uh, he says, I, I actually looked, because I took a photo of that today, and he says to George, you wrote it, it's canon. And George goes, not really. <laughs> that's <what> George <laughs> says, not really. <laughs> oh, so good. So, I love that that's the only time we hear George speak. Like yeah, you know, well, I think he said something earlier about like the volume. He's just like, "Yeah, this is what I wanted to do." Oh, that's Some, right. That's like right. just yeah. matter of fact nonsense. So yeah, it was fun, and like I, I, uh, I don't know, got me pretty excited for season two. Uh, I, I, I don't know mm-hmm. exactly how that's gonna, uh, w- when that's coming, but they announced this huge publishing plan for the fall, so I assume it's on schedule. Right, yeah, because so. it's shot. It's finished oh, I know. shooting, I'm, so I just, it's unaffected. I wonder how... The only thing post-wise I'm curious how it's affected, how the post-production would be affected, would be the scoring. Mm-hmm. Because usually if you have a full orchestrated score, you, you collect the, uh, an orchestra in a room together. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. theoretically, I suppose, they could test a whole orchestra and, and just have them in for a day. Uh, mm-hmm. But, like... Yeah, I just, I just want, I'm just curious. Uh, that, that's uh, like, that's the only part that I feel like would be like nearly impossible to just do remotely. Cause you, right, it, because you could record read it, all the instruments separately, but it'd be, it would sound different. It would, yeah, it wouldn't sound the same. Cause like I did read something where they were talking to the special effects guy who like did say like, yeah, we are working remotely. Like we're still doing the same amount of like special effect shots that we would mm-hmm. like for the last season, but like we're all working remotely. So like that, like does complicate it a bit yeah i was looking because like i mean also star trek discovery season three finished shooting it like the same time so like that'll Uh be coming also this year and like that probably has like more effect shots that have to be finished 
Right. I would guess just because there's a lot of those volume shots with with the Mandalorian. Right. But like, uh, yeah, I'm just curious. I, I'm just curious about how advanced post because like you know post production on projects we've worked on is essentially one person editing something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing nearly all the work. Uh, you most of the time, I should say. Uh, Unbelievable truth. <laughs> um, I mean, that's how it works with small and productions. It is what yeah. it is. But I always, I was, just, I'm just curious because, like, most of the time on a big Hollywood production, you have at least five or six people in the room at a time, even on mm-hmm. just the regular cut. That does not to mention effects or anything like that. So I'm just, uh, you know. I'm just, it, I'm curious. I'm looking forward it's to Disney Gallery going to. season two. Like, <laughs> yeah, me too. Right, there's got, a lot, better, got to be a lot of interesting better, stuff there. I think. Better come out instantly. Wow. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, not six months later. You see that they put all of the Frozen 2 thing out at once? Not No, weekly. I didn't. They put out oh. six episodes. It's the same kind of thing, apparently. And it's like all hear- came out in one day. I hear they're doing a, a making of Hamilton because Hamilton's their yeah, big uh, their yeah. big release right now. So, well, I mean, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That show is great. Uh, you know, I I was uh, surprised they bumped it up considering the theatrical release schedule for it was next fall. Because mm-hmm. this is a filmed version of the original cast, but like it was going to come out next October and it's like, and like they bumped it up to this year, I guess just as like a nice thing to put on Disney plus at this point. But I, yeah, um, but yeah. And then you're trying to celebrate the 4th of July. Of course. Of course. It is a, yeah, no, I, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to watch it. The, I I didn't know they were doing a making up. That's interesting. I'm, uh, I'm, well, I know they just announced that the other day. So, uh, I'm, I'm, um, I don't want to say I'm looking forward to the 4th of July, but uh, you may, may you probably know that they're going to do fireworks over Mount Rushmore, which is an hour away from me. Oh, and wow. uh, uh-huh. they haven't done those since 2009 because of threat of wildfire. And there was just So they're going wild... to do it this year because we all know and wildfire is not a problem anymore. Last no, week not... there was a wildfire oh, in God. the area. 400 acres burned. Oh so... my God. <laughs> These maniacs in the state you're living in. What the hell? I, I <laughs> vow to never return here again. <laughs> I, actually, I, I, I actually had a joke with a friend in high school that where we just like we this like we had this this was the stupidest joke but our joke was that South Dakota didn't didn't exist like mount rushmore was just like a matte painting and that there was actually <laughs> nothing in south dakota because there's no sports teams there's no amusement parks here so like yeah like even all the that... big colleges are in north dakota yeah exactly there's so, nothing here i was uh that's like you and i used to have a joke that richard marquand wasn't a real person <laughs> <laughs> Same exact joke. <laughs> Same exact joke. <laughs> um, oh boy! So, yeah. But now that I've been to South Dakota, I'm just like I should have never come here. Like, well, I should have you know, known. You'll be but gone I am soon going, enough. But I'm going to see Batman tomorrow. Batman's playing at the local theater. Oh, the nice. Batman. And you'll so. be uh, one of. Yeah, I'm not sure if our theater is going to open next week or not. Like they've been dodgy about the date, so well, well, well I, don't, not to, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I don't know. I think not to get too political, but I think Wolf has handled the situation well. He's handled yes. it way better than My, a lot of governors. Uh, so. Tom Wolf is our is the Pennsylvania governor. He has handled yeah the virus extremely well, despite you know what a lot of Pennsylvania's rural residents might think. Right. right, right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no. But anyway, <laughs> not to get too political about something that no one's going to get mad about because they don't know who the fuck Tom Wolf is. <laughs> I mean, I guess we probably have a lot of PA listeners, so maybe they're all furious. Maybe, maybe. I'm going to say now that, like, I think he's going to get himself reelected for just, like, the way he's handled it. I think it, he so. said he might not run because I know he had a health scare earlier this oh, term. Oh, okay. But I don't right. know. I mean, he's certainly nationally, I think, going to get a lot of recognition just because PA has been one of the mm-hmm. states that's 
done a lot better numbers wise than most other states. I think we were in the top three. It was like us, Montana, and Hawaii. In Montana, there's no human <laughs> beings who live there besides Harrison Ford. No, uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Michael Keaton uh, and uh, and uh, Hawaii's an island, so I feel like uh, I feel like that's and, and, a pretty good record. And Keaton, a famous Pennsylvanian, yes, so. absolutely <laughs> worked on Mister Rogers and shit, man. Yeah, oh, PA, legend. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, you know who else worked on Mister Rogers? George Romero. My boy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, actually, not on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He worked on an earlier show that Fred Rogers did, I believe, mm. was what it was. Anyway, moving on. Yes. I uh, More unrelated Star Wars content. Well, there's inbound. at least one other Star Wars thing, wasn't there? Oh, somewhere? we were going to talk about the Mandalorian books. They announced oh. that they're doing books, and, which and includes... Includes a junior well, it, novelization. Yes. But listen, we don't do novelizations on this show. Right, so, or else... Cause, if this we did is, that, we'd have to do all the movies. This is my challenge to Lucasfilm. Publish some Mandalorian tie-in content for middle grade readers that mm-hmm. is original. And we'll review it on this very popular podcast. <laughs> we will give you all the free publicity <laughs> you want. <laughs> but we will not submit to your novelization. <laughs> 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 I'm actually like curious about this novelization because like Cause, I want to like, know like how many pages season. it is. Like I think, yeah, and that makes the like, most sense. And you could do like a, each episode of a chapter. Like it's not like it could, yeah, could be, could um, be, yeah. So, but uh, but they're also doing an adult novel. So like how like well, that, yeah that's an actual tie-in you're doing an original novel. So like why can't you do an original junior novel? It makes no sense. All right. Well. But, okay. One last thing, and then we'll take our break, and we'll cover both a short story that we were going to cover last week and uh, book two of Last of the Jedi. But there's one very important thing. I found uh, <laughs> I found this thing. Uh, there's this issue, uh, the very first issue of Atari Age from June, May or June of 1982. All right? So early mm-hmm. video game magazine features an incredible article that, listen, has nothing to do with Star Wars, but (laughs) I feel like this is not known. Like, this is not a thing on the internet that people have talked about enough, so Mm -hmm. I sent you a copy of this article, and I want you to read the interviewer from Atari... Okay, that's what I figured. (laughs) ...from Atari Age, and I will play the interviewee. Uh, And if you didn't know, the interviewee is on the very first page... Of the very oh, first really? issue of Atari Age. <laughs> Atari Age interviews the one and only Pac-Man. In this exclusive interview, today's hottest video star reveals how sudden fame has changed his life. Video star. <laughs> Alright, all right. I actually have to like move my microphone because I can't like zoom in on the photo at all, so okay. I can't like sure. I can't like <laughs> read it. Alright. Alright. I'm sure lots of our young readers. Uh, would like to uh, grow up to be a video star like yourself. Did you have any special training to prepare for the work that you do? I had what you'd call a well-rounded education. (laughs) I was involved in high school dramatics. I played the lead in Central High's production of Mana La Muncher. I did much more acting in college, mostly Theater in the Round Productions. I didn't neglect my studies, though. In fact, I graduated Sphera Cum Laude. And how did you get into show business? Frankly, it was rough. For a while there, I worked as a ball in those Follow the Bouncing Ball musical films. Then, when those went out of style, I got a job as a host of a new television show called Celebrity Grapefruit. You may have missed it. We were canceled early in the season. After that, I had nothing to fall back on but residuals from some stunt work I did in an enzyme detergent commercial. That is, until this game thing came along. Pac-Man, we don't want to pry into your personal life, but we understand that you have a new girlfriend. (laughs) Isn't it amazing how those rumors start? Let's set the record straight once and for all. 
There is a new arcade game with a lady Pac-Man. And they tell me she's real cute. Long eyelashes, a bow in her hair, and curves in all the right places. Ooh. But I've hardly met the lady. I've been so busy lately. You know, personal appearances on National Pac-Man Day, working on my nightclub act. Ooh, and what kind of act is that? Ballroom dancing? No, no, actually, I'm getting a chance to sing. I do a song and dance number to the rock and roll classic, Leader of the Pack. <laughs> and the audiences love our version of that old country and western song, Ghost Biters in the Sky. Sounds great. Any other projects in the works? I'm just putting the finishing touches on my autobiography. It's called Dot's Life. And I'm very excited about a special appearance my agent is working on at the World Series. You know how every year they have different celebrities throw out the first ball of the series. Well, if everything goes right, I'll be the first celebrity ever to be the first ball of the series. It would be a heck of an honor. Wow, sounds like you're a real baseball fan. Tell me, Pac-Man, who's your favorite player? Well, I was very impressed watching that new pitcher, Fernando Bolenzuela. But my all-time favorite would have to be Willie Mays. Well, Pac-Man, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you today. Before you go, would you have a, any special messages for the game player readers out there? I'd like to thank them for supporting my game. You know, a lot of people didn't think I had a ghost of a chance in the video game business. After all, I don't explode, or shoot, or crash, or anything like that. But you folks have made the me this mellow yellow fellow the chomping champion of the world. And I appreciate that. <laughs> I love how many ball puns. It's ridiculous! <laughs> oh. Sphere cum, sphere cum laude. It's, it's like. ridiculous. <laughs> um, I don't understand. I don't understand how that's not more famous. I feel like it should be a famous article. I agree. Uh, I mean, I laughed out loud the first time I read this part. He <laughs> said that he's doing leader of the pack. Oh my god, that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, uh, I just wanted to share that with our listeners. It has nothing to do with anything that we do here, but... No, absolutely Even our not, normal it... off-topic conversation is... Yeah, we've usually... never ventured into video yeah, games, yeah, ever, so, yeah, I don't it's... think. Anyway, all right, so when we come back, we will talk about the short story, Last One Standing, I believe is what it's mm -hmm. called, uh, and then we will get into book two of Last of the Jedi, Dark Warning. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. You there, young Padawan, you don't need to listen to the rest of this podcast. Join me in the dark side. Skip to the end. Books? Who needs books? Nobody needs books. A Sith Lord doesn't need books. Join to the dark side. Skip to the end. You don't need to listen to these two fools babble on. Come on, what are you waiting for? Wait, no, you want to listen? No, no, no! Welcome back to Padawan Library. I'm Tim May. Here, as always, with Levi Paratic. Levi? Yeah, hello. Hi. Hey. Uh, so this week, we're going to briefly touch on this short story that we should have done like three weeks ago or uh, something. Yeah. <laughs> but um, this short story, yeah, it's called, what's it called again? The uh, uh, la the Last One Standing. The Last One Standing. So this is basically a story about kind of how Obi-Wan first deals with the Tusken Raiders. Right. And... This is a pretty interesting story. I'm not. We don't need to go through it beat by beat. But basically, like the Tusken Raiders are fucking with the moisture farmers. Uh, mm -hmm. Uncle Owen's like, I don't want your help, you old coot. Get out of here. But Obi Wan's like, I'm obviously gonna help him. Whatever. And uh, he goes to help him, but like then he remembers that ever since Anakin had his encounter with the Tusken Raiders, he didn't know what happened there, and that's like when he started to feel the real break and the drift begin between him and Anakin, and then, and then like Obi Wan gets really pissed, and he's like starting to get mad, and it's like it's almost like Anakin's embodying him, like mm -hmm. some pretty cool stuff going on, and then eventually he, you know, 
saves the day. Owen's like, oh, doesn't mean I owe you shit, you know, basically. And uh, then Obi-Wan's like, I never said you did, and he leaves. That's basically the story. That's basically the story, so, yeah. Um, it was cool, though. I really liked it. Like, I, yeah. This is my favorite I of like the short how- stories we've read for the show. I agree. I like how it deals with Anakin. Like, how it, it's like... Because this feels like a prologue to Last of the Jedi, where it's like... Because we get a little bit of, of... We won't... We'll get into it, but we get a little bit of resolution with Obi-Wan in this book uh, than the book we're reading this week. But yeah. this is, like, still where he's very much, like, blaming himself. And uh, there's... <laughs> There's that w- the one quote you reminded me about today, where it's just like, "Oh, we want to dealt with the living force, but babies." Like, yeah, <laughs> <don't need> <laughs> the living force was one thing, but babies. <laughs> That's like something like referring to Luke, of course. So it's so right, like so funny. <laughs> right, and like this story also too uh, bears a lot of similarity to. Uh, do you remember the one story of myths and fables we read? about like where yeah. it's like it could have been obi-wan but yeah but i i just like how like i'll actually read this one bit here because this is where like obi-wan kind of actually battles the darkness uh loathing choked him the sand people made nothing and gave nothing back they merely preyed on the weak the moisture farmers who worked backbreaking days were attacked on raids and often resulted in death and complete destruction stealing the evaporators from owen baru's farm had would bring a terrible hardship They had tortured Anakin's mother for a month just to test her resolve. Was it any wonder that Anakin had been left with such a deep and festering wound? He could do this for Anakin. His Padawan was dead. His brother, his son, his friend. He could give him this. A fearsome anger unleashed. Vengeance. Vengeance against the beings in a world with so much darkness inside them uh, that life meant nothing to them. They swallowed life in hope. That was what the Sith counted on. Beings like these. They had taken over the galaxy. They had won. But not here. Not today. He stopped. His stillness intrigued them. He held his lightsaber in a way that any Jedi would recognize as the beginning of aggression. He had no hesitation, no doubt that he could vanish, vanquish them all, destroy this camp, and destroy every breath of life in it. He felt the, his anger rise. He took pleasure in it. It was growing inside him and obliterating everything else. He wanted it to be overtaken. He didn't want to be careful. He only wanted the white heat of satisfaction. Agony then, shit right there. Yeah, it's 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 very deep. And of course the voice of Qui Gon comes to save him and tells him, you know, don't you know, don't do that. Um but there's also like another bit here where let me see if I can find it. It's where like he mentions like what Anakin says. Oh, here we go. This is him reflecting on how he had failed Anakin. If only. Why hadn't Why hadn't he? Because of Obi-Wan had failed him. If he had been a better master, if he had more of Qui-Gon's kindness and wisdom, Anakin might have approached him. uh, He might have felt free to say whatever he was thinking or feeling. If. If they had flown together, wingtip to wingtip, they had relied on each other. If he was more daring when Anakin was with him, Anakin had taught him how to take risk. But in the end, he lost everything. I hate you! Anakin screamed to him in the volcanic slope, withering in pain on the black sand while the lava uh, river burned behind them. That was where Obi-Wan... That was where Obi-Wan kept returning, that vision of hatred. Because no matter how Palpatine had corrupted Anakin, no matter how the dark side had taken him over, no matter what decisions he had made in the... made in his heat and his fury he was obi-wan's apprentice and he ended up hating his master and that was his master's failing good shit so yeah uh definitely check this out i mean i guess the only place to get it is that omnibus that uh, of led of uh, legacy and secrets of the jedi but you can if you dig around you can find it on the internet too so yeah uh, yeah, it was good lead into last week's book, but it, there's some tie-in stuff this week, too, so... Yeah, towards the end of the book, we get a little bit of tie-in, so... So, yeah, uh... Now, if you remember, last week, Last of the Jedi began with 
Obi Wan on Tatooine. He felt uh, he, he finds out basically that Ferris Olin is alive, the uh, the runaway apprentice from Jedi Quest of Siri, the one love of uh, Obi Wan's life, uh, yep. and uh, he's. Apparently involved in some resistance movement on a nearby planet, so Obi Wan hitches a ride, gets to that planet, and uh, meets Ferris. They all, you know, deal with things, and they they escape, but not without a stowaway. A little boy named Trevor. Jerry's mm-hmm. still out on Trevor in my mind. I, I agree. Trevor to me is like whenever a TV show's ratings are dwindling, and in like they're just like, let's introduce the little nephew I mean, into yeah, the mix. You know, so. It has a classic name, and that's Cousin Oliver, of course. Yes, from the Brady Bunch. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, we are we are the youngest possible people that have any relationship with the Brady Bunch, right? I agree. I agree. Like you and I, like probably watched it a little in reruns, like. Maybe. Right. Well, we also had the Brady movies. The movies, like which I love. I love the first and the one. very Brady sequel. Love the first so one. We did. That's a delightful <laughs> movie. Shelley Long is my queen. So, uh, <laughs> as you know. Uh, so yeah. The um, anyway, whatever. Why are we talking about the Brady bunch? Anyway, so uh, basically, the book ends with um with. Obi Wan, Ferris, and Trevor are all on a transport, and they realize they're being followed by Boba Fett. Boba Fett. And here's what I'm going to say: I think we can get through the first like 40 pages of this book very quickly. Very quickly, because Boba Fett is chasing them. Yep. They're trying to avoid Boba Fett recognizing any of them or encountering any of them. And guess what? They clash with Boba Fett a lot. And then you know what? There's another bounty hunter. They take care of that bounty hunter. Boba Fett. Gets away. Yep. That's the first, like, 45 pages of this Yeah. Book. Yeah, the first 45 pages... I will say, page... exciting, decent action mm-hmm. writing, I, but, like, there's just not much to talk about here. No, this is what the... The first 40 pages should have been what the Boba Fett books were like. Should have been like. Exactly. I have noted here that the this first part is... Uh, there's lots of TNA, total nonstop action. uh, (laughs) um, That's the first part of this book. Uh, The only thing that's really, uh, only really notable from this first part of this book is that, well, first off, this is a Trevor moment. Uh, They need to get a starship to escape. Trevor gets one for them, and it has no hyperdrive. Classic. Trevor. That's yes, that's and, what happens. So, yeah. And then uh, the only other part is uh, the other bounty hunter. He gets crushed like under a roof, and they incapacitate him. And he says something on the lines of, um, "Let's see here. It's actually on page sixteen. This plays into later in the book. That's why I'm bringing it up." Uh, he said, uh, "One day you'll be another Jedi prisoner on Coruscant. Mm. Malarum has his way." So that's just one thing that just hmm, a Jedi prisoner on Coruscant. And oh yeah, there was hmm. a big, there was a, a, a um, Malarum or Malorum. I don't know. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, he's an Inquisitor that uh, is uh, doing his doing the dark bidding of Sheev. Uh, so... Malorum sounds more like, um... I think that's that, to me, seems more Star Wars-y than Ma- Malorum, because it sounds like Valorum. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, I think either way is fine, but... No, but he, um... So, anyway, uh, at this point, they go to the planet... What is it? It starts with an A. Uh, um, okay, uh, uh, Archerin? Archerin, let's go with that. They go yep. to the planet Archerin, which has supposedly been abandoned since the end of the Clone Wars um, as a place where they can, you know, land, maybe, you know, figure out a new, a better transport because they can't go right. into hyper uh, right. space they can't, because they can't. there's no hyperdrive in this. Right, and Archerin was the planet that Obi-Wan's friend Garen Mullen was yes. on during Order 66, so that's uh, that's important. Very notable. And when they get- so they get there yeah. and they... Uh, and they are saved. They realize there's a giant blo- imperial blockade over the planet, 
And mm-hmm. so they're trying to land, and uh, this woman named uh, uh, Ray Raina. Rayana Quill. Raina, Raina Quill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Raina. She uh, she help, She crashes their ship, and she says it was a favor because she's part of a resistance movement against the Empire, and uh, and uh, one of them, I think, Trevor's like, oh, you were a. Uh, uh, but this was a, a, a separatist world, and she's just like, so what? Like, we we, we were make, trying to make a peace deal with the Republic, not with this empire, basically. So mm-hmm. they go to the secret base in the capital city, of which we don't. I don't remember the name of. But it, I didn't write it down. It's fine. Oh, it's a capital city. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, I did. It's uh, Yolthan. Okay. E-L-U-T-H-A-N. All right. Um... And they meet Toma, yes. General Toma, who's the leader. Who is the leader, and mm-hmm. um, Toma was friends with Garen Mon because he was the Jedi were... stationed there. And even though he was the leader of a separatist state, him and Garen had befriended each other, so that's notable. Because they were working out the peace treaty together. So, so yeah, that's what they were doing. And uh, so basically, they have to like launch a last ditch effort attack on the Empire, and uh, and Reyna takes uh what's his face ferris with ferris with Uh her uh and leaves treasure trevor behind and obi-wan's like i need to stay alive for luke so nice try i'm not gonna go on this death mission and he stays behind and he helps toma uh with strategy but there's no strategy that's gonna work the empire is overwhelming they 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 massacre most of the fleet but uh and so Toma recalls everybody, says everybody needs to come back, and then he's gonna about to surrender. The emperor, the the, the empire, uh, whoever, whatever you know, general or or moth mm-hmm. or whoever, is like nice try. We're not accepting your terms of surrender. We're just going to destroy your capital. Nice, like like we're done with you. And he's just like, oh shit. He he tells all the returning pilots, don't come back here because we're about to get destroyed. They escape. Uh, uh, Reyna and uh, and Ferris have obviously survived. They are able to meet up, rendezvous with our with Obi Wan and Trevor and Toma, and yeah. all of them escape the planet and they're going away. The Empire's chasing them, and you know what do they do? They pull an Empire Strikes Back, and they go right into an asteroid field. And a big storm is brewing. A yeah, big space storm. Space storm brewing. And what do they find? They find there's a, a, a asteroid big enough that it should be on all the star charts, but it's not on all the star charts. Why is that? Because of the space storm. The, space, of the space storm. storm. Nobody, nobody storm. ever goes inside. It's it's linked to the space storm forever, so nobody ever goes inside. It's never been charted. They land there, and they're like, holy shit, this is crazy. This is wild. I can't believe it. And then it's <laughs> revealed by Toma to Obi Wan that Garen's alive, my guy. And like mm-hmm. Obi Wan's like, "What? Where would he go?" And and he's like, "Oh, of course, he went to this planet called Elam." Uh, and if you know anything, obviously Elam is you know where young young Padawans where they go to build their lightsabers. They go through mm-hmm. a big trial. It's an ice planet. All that shit. And so. Then, uh, this, <laughs> and, and so then Obi Wan, uh, Obi Wan, uh, and uh, Ferris is like actually like starting to get to the point where he's itching. He's like, you know what? Maybe, maybe I can be a Jedi again. Maybe I can be a Jedi again. It's like, and he's like, I want to go build a new lightsaber. We can find Garen. It'll be dope. And Obi Wan's like, all right, I'll go with you, but I got him to handle something else. And if you remember, in the last book. Uh, yes. He found out that uh, Malorum was snooping around. What's the planet? What's the moon called? Polis Massa. Polis Massa. And of course, Polis Massa is where the twins were born, where Luke and Leia were born. And uh, he's snooping around. So, so Obi Wan thinks, well, obviously, he's doing this at the behest of Darth Vader, a.k.a. Anakin Skywalker. And so. <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, Polis Massa happens to be nearby Ilum, so basically Obi Wan's like, "I will go with you, and we can, uh, and I'll drop you off there." But then I got to handle some business. Of course, he's not telling Ferris what that business is because he's not going to tell Ferris about Luke and Leia. 
so then they uh, tr- so then they leave they leave uh, Toma and Reyna back on that asteroid they're like we'll meet you back here and so then uh, th- th- then Obi-Wan f- I'm going to see how far I can go without any notes okay. <laughs> sorry okay, right. Obi-Wan Keep Ferris going. you're almost there okay. <laughs> Obi-Wan Ferris and uh and Trevor, Trevor head out there. Trevor's going to stand watch outside the temple. And Ferris has to go through the back entrance because they're worried the Empire might be on the other, like, on the main, by the main entrance because they would think to, you know, protect Elam because it's a Jedi temple, basically. And so the back entrance, of course, there's these beasties called... Uh, Gorgodons. Gorgodons. So it's like, Obi-Wan's like, make sure you handle these beasties. I'll see you in a bit. So then we split narratives off a little bit here. Obi-Wan is off on Polis Mesa and and uh, Ferris is in uh, is, is on Elam about to build a new lightsaber and find Garen Mold. So Obi-Wan, let's tackle Obi-Wan's side here first. Yes. Obi-Wan is uh, on Polis Mesa and he's and he's friends with the doc with the only human doctor there. What's his name again? I don't know the doctor's name. I don't have that written down. Okay, great. Well, the doctor, apparently he's like, this is a great honorable man, because apparently he helped him and Yoda, like, delete all the memories of all the droids and all that stuff. So, like, there's no record, really, of Luke and Leia's birth. So, but when he gets there, he he has to see him, and he does see see this doctor, but the doctor's like, there's an Inquisitor here. It's not Malorum, it's a different Inquisitor. Do you know the... It is Sancor. Sancor. Inquisitor Sankor is there in another room. So they have to hatch a plan. And, like, my guy, the doctor, is like, okay, listen, there's no actual evidence, but if people are looking for stuff, like the supply numbers, that's what it's all about, Levi. It's the supply numbers. <laughs> and the supply numbers from around when Padme was a, was a patient there look like, okay, well, maybe there's some supplies that are used in in birthing processes, and there are no mm-hmm. other people that were giving birth at the thing at the time. So it's like, we need to figure out something, and Obi-Wan's like, why don't we add some stuff so, like, it looks like a bigger deal than maybe, like, you know, like, that, oh, like, maybe a Jedi was being treated there or something like that. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's what they do. And we'll get back to that in a second. Let's move over. Two, <laughs> Ferris Olin is defeats some beasties. He moves on. He's gonna have some visions. We'll get back to that. Going back to Obi Wan. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to Obi Wan. He, um, he, he uh, so basically they have decided that Obi Wan's gonna pose as like uh, the supply guy. Uh, the supply guy uh, went and go talk directly to the Inquisitor. And the Inquisitor is just like Sankor. And so Sankor is like uh, asking him all these questions. He's like, I'm going over the supply list. I'm asking you all these questions. It's like, And he's starting to get pretty close to the truth there because he's like, oh, this is like something that would be used for uh, somebody uh, in, in who's going through childbirth. And, like, and Obi-Wan's like, oh, I don't know. He tries to mind trick him and he's like, nice try. And then all these like employees names are and faces are going by on a screen behind him and like one of them winds up being the guy that Obi-Wan's impersonating with his actual face and Obi-Wan's like oh shit oh shit but then the doctor the dumb doctor comes in and just and and and, and so the cha- chancellor not the chancellor what's his name inquisitor the inquisitor he f- turns around and he sees and the ruse is up He's, like, pissed, and Obi-Wan's like, oh, whatever. He pulls out his lightsaber, starts fighting the Inquisitor. Let's go back to Elam for a second. Ferris. Ferris, you see, he's having visions, and he has a vision of Siri, who's just like, mm-hmm. man, like, do you, are your, is your only reason for doing this is to, because you feel bad about leaving the Jedi Order in the first place, that you want to save the Jedi Order now? And he's like, oh, and he starts questioning, do I have these selfish motivations? And then he's, like, thinking about it, and he's just, like, remembering why he left the Jedi Order, and he's like, oh, Anakin, that dipshit, I don't like that guy. And who manifests Anakin? Anakin. He has a vision of Anakin, and Anakin's like, oh, like, you, this is why nobody ever liked you, you suck, like, I hate you, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a bad person, I've always been a bad person. And then, like, 
And then uh, Ferris says something. He's like, I, uh, you know, I was mad at you for a long time, but, like, I'm glad I left because I found myself. And then Annika's just like, you know what? So did I. Which is so hard. And then, ba- <laughs> and then basically he disappears and then, you know, some other stuff happens. And then Darth Vader appears in a vision. And... I don't. Ferris hasn't put these two things together yet, but then Darth Vader mm-hmm. appears in a vision and like torments him, and uh, and we'll pick up on that in a second. So going back to Polis Mesa, uh, uh-huh. my guy Obi Wan, of course, defeats the the Inquisitor, right? Like if I'm am yeah, I right dude, about this? dude, dude falls on some uh, some medical utensils, like some sharp medical utensils. So. Yes, that's what it was. So, and then what does he do with the doctor? Like he kind of like I don't know what they because I feel do. like the doctor like, like needs to like retreat, get out of there. Cause... Yeah, well, they all need to get out of there, but like they don't actually like really like uh, like go into that at all. So, like Obi Wan just leaves. All right, like, well, then Obi Wan cover up the. They don't cover up the body or anything. Like, they just completely skip over that. So, Obi-Wan leaves, and then back on Elam, Ferris, he gets through all these trials, he makes the fucking lightsaber, and guess who he meets? He, he meets Garen Mull, who's there. That's right. Right. He's there. Well, actually, Garen gives Garen gives him his lightsaber. That's what happens, yes. Garen gives yes. him his lightsaber. He meets Garen. Garen looks emaciated, looks hollowed the fuck out. He's, he, he's been through reading some this, shit. I, Reading this, I thought yeah, it reminded me of the old uh, the old knight from Last Crusade guarding the Holy Grail. Oh, absolutely! That's, uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's what I was thinking. And so, <laughs> basically, like Garen, though he hasn't like lost all of his like like it's it, he's not like lost his faith. It's just that he's like he's he's hollowed the fuck out. Like I said, so yeah. Well, he's been it's been like a year, right? And, yeah, it's been and like he's a been year basically after alone because he came to Elon yeah. to see if there would be other. Um, uh, there, if there would be other Jedi there, and he's the only one who showed up. So, basically, well, actually, no, no, there was one other. Oh, right, who was the other one? They don't go into that, but she left to go to Coruscant. Right, and she and never, she never came back. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So in Coruscant, if you remember, there were Jedi maybe in prison on Coruscant. Interesting. Uh huh. So uh-huh. they all they leave the temple, and there's stormtroopers. They have to escape, and they battle some stormtroopers, and Whatever. Obi Wan returns. Uh, they all meet back up. Trevor went on some dumb misadventure that I forgot about, but they all not important. They're all back together, okay? Uh, on Elam, and they're about to leave, and like, and Ferris is like, "My guy, Obi Wan, my guy. We need to go to Coruscant and save these motherfuckers. Save all these Jedi that might be imprisoned there." And Obi Wan's like, "Great." You should definitely fucking do that. You should definitely do that. But I gotta get out of here. I gotta leave. Sorry, I can't tell you why. All this stuff. And Ferris is like, these motherfucking Jedi. Like, this is why I left in the first place. So, <laughs> that. but first, but first they're like, oh, where's a sanctuary where we can keep these rescue Jedi? How about that asteroid in that yep. storm, though? So, they fly back to the storm. They fly back and they, uh, oh, and wait a minute. Ferris contacted his boy Roan from the first book, mm-hmm. who was his best friend after he left the Jedi Order. If you remember from last week, I think there's more to that than friendship. I believe that Ferris and Roan are I, a I'm, couple. I, and uh, since you said that, reading this, I'm you know, it's not like it goes into it, but no, these it two doesn't know go each into it very it's a, well. It's a scholastic Star Wars licensed novel from 2005. It's not going to go right. into it. But, but these two are very close. It would if it were published today. I'm sorry. It just would. It, fe- it reads that way. Anyway, mm-hmm. so they... Uh, so Roan brings all this shit where they can build a greenhouse and they can sustain life on this asteroid. He brings all this shit and, like, meets up with them and is just like, hey, man, I got a lot of shit to handle back home. Like, but... Uh, like, I can see you have this new calling, you want to return to the Jedi, like, this is fucking weird, but, like, I love you, babe. And they say <laughs> goodbye. And then they bring all this these new supplies back to the asteroid. This is where... Uh, and so, basically, they get to the asteroid, they set up, like, a greenhouse, they're gonna 
plant shit. It's going to be just a fully sustaining environment for these rescue right. Jedi is basically the idea. So then uh, my boy Garen uh, is getting, is, is, there's medical help being given to him by by uh, Reyna, who apparently was almost a doctor right before the Clone Wars, but then just couldn't take that test once the war broke out. And then... Keep going, you're almost and there, you're Toma almost there. Is like, Toma and Reyna are both like, we'd love to like take care of these the, the, this Jedi retirement home. We're all about it. And so, then, Obi-Wan tell, it, it says like, okay, well, you want to go to Coruscant? You guys should go to Coruscant on your way. Drop me off on Tatooine, my guy. You gotta drop me off on Tatooine. And, like, finally, like, there's some sense of, like, understanding, even if uh, Ferris is kind of still like, I, Obi-Wan, what the fuck, you should be with us. And Because so, he doesn't know all the facts. He doesn't know everything that's going on. So, anyway, they drop Obi-Wan off on Tatooine, and Obi-Wan has a nice little conversation with Qui-Gon uh, in his head, like, oh, man, like, he figured it out, so, uh, and then, uh, Ferris and Trevor are on Coruscant at the end of the book, and they mm -hmm. go past the Jedi Temple, and it's in fucking ruins. And this hits Ferris, like, it's the first time it's really dawned on him, the Jedi have been, like, fucking snuffed out. So, that's the book. End of book. <laughs> that's, that's I got on a roll. roll and I had to do it. You did it. I didn't have yeah, anything I mean, in front of me. No notes. I don't have a physical copy of this book. I read it digitally. I'm a fucking lord. <laughs> All right. I apologize I that that made the episode shorter than it normally is. No, no, that's fine because like I feel like the, like I don't love this book. Yeah, I think this book's just fine. I like, agree. There's great just... moments in it, but it's yeah. And I'll read one of these great moments here. And this is between the Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon scene towards the end of the book. So, um, this starts with Ferris. I'm glad that our paths crossed again, he said. You were kind to me as an apprentice, Ferris, Ferris replied. I admire you more than any Jedi, you and Suri. Now I guess I trust you too, and that's not as easy. Qui-Gon would say that when it comes to the living force, trust is the only currency, Obi-Wan said. Ferris nodded. You said you would help me if I needed it. I pledge the same to you. May the Force be with you, Obi-Wan Kenobi. May the Force be with you, said Obi-Wan. Find them and gather them. Make them safe. With his hand on his new lightsaber, Ferris strode up the ramp. Obi-Wan stepped back onto the rocky soil of Tatooine. He retreated to the relative shelter of a cliff overhang to watch as Ferris did a flight check before departure. A voice entered his head. I never said trust was currency of the living force. This time, Qui-Gon sounded dry and amused. Obi-Wan smiled. You didn't? I don't think I'd say anything as pompous as that. That sounds more like you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's great moments like that. And, like, I thought all the stuff with Obi-Wan... This is my problem. It's not a problem problem. I maybe we'll get like one scene with Qui with Obi Wan in the last book or something, but this is the last Jude Watson book with Obi Wan as a main character, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of underwhelming on that level. It's maybe not her fault. I think Obi Wan was maybe intended to be more of an important character through the whole series, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was kind of pulled back a little bit, but right. Um, a little bit underwhelming on that level. There is some... I, I'm still very nervous about Trevor. He's barely in this book, so it didn't really hurt the book that much for me, but, like, he's... Well, at the end of the book, too, well, there's a moment in the book where Trevor's just like, oh, man, I just want to find a little piece of action for myself. Live quietly and peacefully away from the yeah, Empire. Yeah, you should do that. And th yeah, and then at the end of the book... Uh, Ferris is like, oh, I got some connections on Coruscant. I could set up a good life for you. And then Trevor is like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You're going to dump me like garbage? I don't think so. I'm sticking around, buddy. Like, Hopefully not too long. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I didn't think this was bad. But, uh, yeah, no, as far as Jude goes, it was a bit subpar. I'm going to go with, like, a 7.5. I was thinking I was thinking a 7. Uh, That's, like, right where I was going to go. So, it's a, it's a fine. It's 
it's but it's not anything. The last to write one was about. incredible, so I was, yes, I agree. So, but I'm looking forward to next. Well, next week we're going uh, into next... Galaxy of Fear, back into the galaxy, baby. Yes, we are. What, we're going number to be five, doing which is book five, uh, Ghost of the Jedi, is what we're reading next week. So Ghost of the that'll Jedi, be that'll be fun. Well, author read some wikipedia articles to refresh my memory on where we are in the story Um, well the last one we read was the nightmare machine i think right yeah yeah Yeah. so they just left hologram fun world right so right so So, anyway it's uh so that'll be we'll do that next week and we'll pick up uh, last of the jedi the week after with uh i believe it's called underworld uh number three so which i actually have physically so that's nice uh (laughs) Uh, anyways, so. ooh, ooh! Speaking of these uh, books, we'll get into the cover artist, uh, Cliff. Uh, uh, oh, John Van Fleet. Yeah, John Van but Fleet. I do want to point out there is a major continuity error on the front cover of the first book, and oh, okay. that is Obi Wan's lightsaber that he's holding is his Episode One lightsaber, ooh. which oh, we all know he lost that before the end of Episode One. So come on, John. And I also, this book too, um, it has another on the back cover. It says, uh, cover designed by Henry Nig. Uh, NG is the last name. Name. And, uh, but anyway, I believe that Henry probably did the, uh, the Photoshop, uh, layout of this cover. And then John came in and rotoscoped over everything. Uh, that's cause this is photo on the cover. Although the design photo, could just be, like, the logo and stuff. Well, this photo here of Darth Vader is definitely, like, a promo still for Episode 3. That's true. Like, where yeah. he's... Yeah, so, like, there's that. Um, I'm curious whoever was the model for uh, for Ferris here, because he's just basically a, a basic basic white guy. Yeah. Um, but, anyway, we'll get into him next week. We'll discuss John. Alright, so, yeah, next week, Galaxy of Fear, and then... Oh, wait, no, not next yeah, week, so the week after. Two weeks from now. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, anyway, uh, sorry for the short episode. I got on such a roll, I had to I had to give it my all. Um, I'll have to do that next week. I'll to, yeah, see well, if you can I'll, do I'll, it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't well, believe I did it from memory. Um, anyway, so... If I got anything wrong, let us know. Or don't. Uh, all right. Uh, in the meantime, everybody, uh, be responsible. You know, wear, wear masks when you go wear to public mask. places. You know, uh, stay home when you don't need to go. If you don't, you don't need to go to the mall. Don't go to the no. mall. Stay away from the mall. the mall. The malls are dead. The malls are dying. Let them die. Yeah. Let the past die. <laughs> Kill it if you have to. So. <laughs> um... So anyway, do that, and in the meantime, you can you can stay home and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> at Padawan Library, and you can uh, email us, padawanlibrary at gmail.com. We're still looking to do a mailbag episode in the near future, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, that's about it. That's it. All right, until the books are due back. The library at, is closed, and the mall should be closed, too. <laughs> Padawan Library is hosted and produced by Tim May and Levi Peretic. It is edited by Tim May. Our theme song is by The Astral Project. Our artwork is by Freddie Funbuds. Copyright 2020. Tim May and Levi Peretic. All rights reserved.